hi friends welcome back to my channel when i made my apartment tour video thing a bunch of people said that they were interested in doing like a full-on kitchen tour so that's what we're gonna do today before we jump right into it i am gonna split this video into two parts just because I end up getting really long but also I have to do groceries. <laughs> so this video is gonna be all about like a tour of my kitchen and the essentials and things that I use to minimize my waste and live a more simple, sustainable, minimal lifestyle. And then the other video will be like a pantry tour. It's just going over the staple foods I have in my pantry and what goes on in my fridge and all that. So yeah. I also should mention before we get too far into the video that it is brought to you by Audible. Thank you so much to Audible for sponsoring this video. Anyways, so my kitchen, this is a very realistic tour. I live on basically like the same thing as a student budget, if not lower than the budget I was on when I was a student. I live in Seattle, Washington. Our rent is $900 each a month. And we live in this built in the 50s, maybe was updated at some point in the 70s, I don't know apartment. I like our kitchen. It's very like cozy feeling So arguably one of the first things that you might think about when furnishing an apartment I guess would be all the things that you use to just like live your everyday life all of the pots pans bowls plates Everything that we have either was secondhand or given down to us hand me down down to us For example the plates that we use these were actually my roommate Tay. Yes I do share this space with somebody else who she's also vegan but not as low waist as I am, but definitely on her way transitioning to it. These plates were the plates that her family used in the 90s and she still has. Everything else virtually, whether it's these bowls we got at a thrift store, same thing with our measuring cups, little ramekin dishes, our random mismatched assortment of bowls. This is one of my favorites. It has some little bunnies on it. Pretty much everything that we needed, like tool-wise or plates, pots, bowls, that we all got secondhand, so that is definitely something that I really encourage people to look into. Something I feel like I always get questions on is washing our dishes. So we actually don't have a dishwasher that works. We have one, but like it doesn't work very well. We hand wash most of our dishes, but I do encourage people to use a dishwasher if they can because it actually uses less water. We just have like a bar of cast aisle soap. What cast aisle soap is, is it means that it's just a pure plant oiled soap. So this one is a Dr. Bronner's brand. Dr. Bronner's is the only company that I support palm oil coming from. They're like rewriting the way that the palm oil industry has been run, which I think is obviously really important. And I definitely want to do a full in-depth video on palm oil. I haven't yet, but if you want to listen to the podcast that I have on it, it is up on my Patreon. I do plan on doing like a full on in-depth video on YouTube though. So make sure you hit subscribe and some snot just came out of my nose. <laughs> a little veggie brush here. This one is from my friend's store, Ego Collective. I'll link it down below. And this is a wood-based brush with plant-based bristles. This is fully compostable at the end of its life. And the reason I like using a bar of soap as opposed to a liquid, you guys have heard me say this a billion times, I'm eliminating a bottle and like water transportation by using this little bar of soap. You just wet the end of the brush and then you just swipe it on top of here. Proceed to wash this is a pretend dish, wash your dishes. And it works really well. I also have a bottle brush, which I've mentioned before too. I don't love this bottle brush. I'm still looking for a better alternative, but I do find between those two and maybe like a little cloth, I can get all my dishes done and uh, that's what matters. <laughs> If you do use a dishwasher, I highly recommend looking into drops. They sell like those little like dishwasher tablet things or you could make a DIY. Both of those are really great options. I'll leave those linked in the description box below. One of the things that we decided we didn't even want to thrift or get secondhand was our glasses. And this isn't to be like some super hipster trendy millennial. All the jars that we had bought, like this used to be a tahini jar. We just cleaned them out and put them in here. There is the odd. I personally really like the extra large wide mouth mason jar for smoothies and stuff because they're like the best size for that so we did get a couple of these at Goodwill for like 20 cents. Goodwill sells the cheapest mason jars. Let it be known. If someone needs a glass when they come over we just use old jars and it seems I mean it like holds it holds the liquids so it gets the job done. <laughs> and then all of our mugs are either secondhand or this one I did get from like a local potter. This mug honestly reminds me of Urban Outfitters like I feel like Urban Outfitters would sell this now. 
There are three things that I bought brand new in this kitchen that I do kind of regret. And one of which was matching stemless wine glasses just because this was my first apartment and I really wanted a matching set. And I looked everywhere in the thrift stores and I couldn't find a matching set of stemless ones specifically. So I did buy brand new ones. And I kind of regret that because it's like, if I had just waited a little bit longer, I would have found them. It's funny because there's three things that I bought brand new in this kitchen and two out of three I regret and I will explain the next one. <laughs> so upcycling our old glass jars has been one of my favorite things too to make use of in our kitchen and the other thing that I like to upcycle is different like standing jars like this. This used to be a kombucha bottle. There isn't much left in it but I usually put my teas in here. Here's maybe a better fuller <laughs> example. So I put my teas in here and that way they're really easy to just pour into my tea strainers, which I freaking love because that was one of my pet peeves of getting loose leaf tea in the beginning when I was transitioning away from using tea bags because if you didn't know, the majority of them do have plastic in them, which also is scary because you're putting those bags in a boiling thing of hot water plus plastic and it's like, are we not drinking that plastic? I actually will link an interesting article below about that. So I did switch to loose leaf tea and getting it um, just from like a local tea shop. And yeah, I put it into these old kombucha bottles and that way it's just super easy to pour out. Coming over to our counters, this is a secondhand toaster oven. This is Tay's little section of coffee stuff. We both have our own different methods. She does use the Chemex thing, which I know is really trendy right now. So if you are also a Chemex user, I got her these reusable coffee filters. They're called a coffee sock and she freaking loves it. She used to have a metal one that was supposed to be reusable, but it kept getting clogged with all of the coffee grinds getting stuck in it. So she really likes this coffee sock and I highly recommend. As for me though, when I make coffee, I use this guy. I have a little French press. And this is the second thing that I bought new that I really regret. I really wanted to try a French press because it is supposedly, aside from cold brew, it is the most sustainable way to make hot coffee. All you really need is boiling water. You don't need any like reusable little coffee sock things or anything. You just put it right in here. And you can make cold brew in here too. So that was the reason I wanted to get it. And I specifically wanted one that was this size that would fit more than one cup. And I did look for a while for secondhand ones on Marketplace, but I really regret it because again if I had just waited a little bit longer one of them would have come up but I proceeded to buy my own just because I was like well I need coffee tomorrow honestly is a valid argument and I understand why I did it at the time but I don't know I probably could have waited I always see them all over Facebook marketplace so and thrift stores I see them in thrift stores sometimes too I'm gonna awkwardly cut in here because I forgot to film this as I was filming the video but I would like to announce that this video is indeed sponsored by audible.com they are wonderful humans, and let me tell you about them. So for those of you who don't know, I know I mentioned them a million times though, so for those of you who do, this maybe is getting a little bit old. However, this time has a little bit of a twist because we are in fact getting close to the holidays, and so Audible has something cool coming out. Basically what Audible is, is it has the world's largest selection of audiobooks available, and with your subscription every month, you get one free audiobook and two free Audible Originals because since they are the biggest selection, they have this really cool thing called Audible Originals. They have all kinds of really celebrated authors and storytellers whose audiobooks are exclusively available over on Audible. That's things like Gabby Bernstein's Super Attractor or Mel Robbins' Take Control of Your Life or The Three Day Effect by Florence Williams. They have all kinds of different Audible originals. And right now, for a limited time, you can get Audible for three months for $6.95, which is less than half of their regular price. To give Audible a try, make sure you go to audible.com slash Sedona or text Sedona to 500-500. And if I could recommend any title right now. You guys know how obsessed I am with Deep Work by Cal Newport. It is one of my favorites of all time and I highly recommend. And one of my next reads is Drawdown by Paul Hawken, which has the most comprehensive plan to reverse climate change. Judging by that is certainly something that I think we all should absorb and read and hear and yeah. So again, if you want to give Audible a try, go to audible.com slash Sedona or text Sedona to 500 500. Back to the video. Next to the French press, over in the corner here, we keep our compost bin. This compost bin I actually got secondhand off of, it was either Let Go or Offer Up. It was one of those apps and I just got it from one of our neighbors. I don't totally recommend this exact compost bin. I know I've seen it being sold new. I don't love that there's a plastic insert in here. Moisture will get in between 
the two and I feel like it has the potential to get kind of gross. I always get questions from people asking like, does our compost smell? It really doesn't. I always, like we take it out maybe a little bit more than once a week, like maybe every five or six days. I mean, there's a lid in between when I take it out. I always make sure that I wash every single piece of this and I let it dry. So like I've completely freshly scrubbed this. I just take our little scrubber, dish scrubber over there and I make sure that I properly wash it out. Composting without a doubt is probably one of the biggest transitions that you could make while shifting over to a more sustainable lifestyle. I highly recommend looking into it if you haven't done so yet. It's so important to return our nutrients to the soil and encourage our soil to become healthier. And not only that, when you put food scraps in a plastic bag and send them to landfill, there's a big difference between sending plastic and other bits of trash to a landfill in comparison to organic compounds because organic elements do break down and they will emit carbon dioxide as they're breaking down and specifically if they're caught in a trash bag and they're being fermented in there. Composting is so, so, so important, returning our nutrients back to soil. The list really does go on and on about how important it is for the health of our planet. And I'm lucky enough to have curbside pickup here in Seattle, so it's been really, really easy for me because our apartment building just has a collection bin that the whole apartment goes and puts their scraps into. So it's super easy for me because then the city comes and picks it up. But if you live in an apartment, there are so many different ways that you can incorporate composting in your life, whether that's putting your scraps in your freezer before you bring them to pick up that's somewhere in your neighborhood, or whether that's incorporating something in your apartment itself or maybe on your balcony. Or if you live in a house, of course, there are so many options for you. I will leave links in the description box below if you have not yet jumped into that. Another thing that we've done to kind of just not only like minimize our waste and our impact on the world, but just minimize the number of things and that we have in our life and make our headspace a little bit better is we've minimized the number of gadgets and tools and things that are in our apartment. So we really only have like the basic things that will work for us. Even if I see something really nifty in a thrift store, like I know I used to have when I was growing up, we had like a quesadilla maker. I always wanted one of those mini donut presses or like a waffle maker. If I'm not gonna use it in my regular routine and I'm just gonna use it once, I've always found that that's something that there's literally no reason for me to have it in my kitchen. It just takes up space. Again, even if it's secondhand, that kind of like minimized our budget, minimized the stresses in our life and the things in our kitchen. The tools that we have in here really are pretty basic. We have a toaster oven. We have our coffee things over here. We do have microwave, which I use pretty often. I have a Vitamix. It was gifted to me for my 21st birthday four years ago and I use it all the time. And then we do also have this old like water kettle thing. This was mine in college if you can't tell by all of the stickers on it. <laughs> but again, it still gets the job done. I didn't need to go out and buy a fancy new one. I feel like other than that, you know, we've got like potato peelers and can openers. We do have a rice cooker and I do use that as well. But other than that, we don't really have any fancy tools or anything. Again, that's kind of something that like, if it works for your lifestyle, then you might need the tool. However, one of my favorite gadgets that I did buy, and this is the third thing that I brought brand new, is reusable baking sheets. Not gonna lie, I literally bought these on Amazon. I used to use my mom's and then she asked for them back, so I had to go out and get my own. But these were a great investment for me personally because I love baking sweet potatoes. I'm trying to eat more seasonally, so right now that's sweet potatoes and acorn squashes and spaghetti squashes and all of that, so baking them is definitely something that I like to do this time of year. I will never need to go out and buy parchment paper, so. Back on the upcycled kind of front, we do have like some random assortment of storage containers. I don't have fancy glass ones. I wish I did, I do feel like glass is better for your health. Right now I just have ones that I either got secondhand or was from a neighbor in our buy nothing group and they didn't need it. One of my favorite things to do and this is a totally free hack. So I, my parents still eat an animal-based diet and they're not conscious about their waste. And so when I was living with them, I would take all of their cold cut containers and I'd wash them out. Now we have a bunch of these that I use to store like my produce in my fridge. Sometimes, you know, if I'm on the go and I need a container to bring my food. And that's pretty much the majority of like our storage containers that we have is these and they work really well. Obviously it's not a forever solution, but you are preventing them from ending up in landfill for as long as possible. It prevents the number of times that you're gonna need to buy something new throughout your lifestyle. Throughout your life, not lifestyle. <laughs>
I have my own drawer over here that has kind of like my teas and my herbs and things like my coffee in here. And I also keep my stasher bags in here. So I have three of them. What these are is just reusable Ziploc bags. I do feel like this was the most costly low waste thing that I've really bought ever. Mostly used when I'm backpacking. You'll notice that this one has a lovely shade of stained hue of turmeric because I'm always putting turmeric in my rice and beans when I go backpacking and hiking. These are great. I do recommend them but again it's like thinking about okay how many do I logistically need it is another gadget it is another thing so like I don't need to go out and buy a hundred of them because personally I'm not gonna use a hundred of them three seems to be a good number maybe I could have one more in the future down in this bottom drawer is where we keep a bunch of our cloths and things that we're using this is actually normally stocked full with secondhand cloths which again I either just got from like parents neighbors or thrift stores literally like in our bathroom I even use cut up old t-shirts it's like any material that works. I think that this even somebody on Instagram told me used to be a cloth diaper. So we've got that going for us. So we keep all of our cloths in here and that's what we use to wipe down the counters for our hands, drying the dishes. We don't use paper towel. Also in here, on the same note as the plastic bags, every once in a while you come across plastic bags, right? So like, I'm not perfect. I have a significant other and he is not somebody who lives a low waste lifestyle. So he definitely has Ziploc bags that he's using and I'll just kind of like steal them, wash them out and reuse them until they rip. So we do kind of have a few of those that we've just cleaned and reused. I feel like this whole video is just me at different angles <laughs> in my kitchen. Not as toury as I had hoped, but I'm trying, guys. I'm trying. Under the sink, when we do wipe down our counters, we use this vinegar all-purpose cleaner that I've made. And I think you guys have seen this before on my Instagram. I actually need to make some more because it's almost empty. But what I do is I soak citrus rinds in vinegar. I do want to do like a full cleaning product video, like all the stuff that I use to clean my space because this isn't great on every surface. I think it's really hard on different granites and wood surfaces, so I don't recommend it on those. We have like a laminate countertop, so it seems to be fine. I'll leave the recipe for this in the description box below. So I think that this pretty much, that sound is so aggravating. I think this pretty much hits on all the different tools and things that we use to live more sustainably in our kitchen. Next week, I will do a pantry tour video. And also you've definitely been able to hear my fridge making this noise the whole time. I hope that this kind of answers all of your questions. My kitchen kind of is and feels like. Really, it's not that difficult to live a more sustainable lifestyle. It's just all kind of about like thinking outside of the box, thinking like, okay, what things can I reuse? Use of my neighbors who maybe aren't using them. Like maybe with regards to the kitchen gadget thing, like maybe one of your neighbors bought an air fryer or one of those like fun things and they're not using it. Or maybe you have one of those lying around and you don't use it and you can give it to somebody who will. A lot of living more sustainably is just saying like okay how can I save the resources that have gone into making things and how can I kind of think outside of the box to avoid waste my rule of thumb is always if it's already on this planet and if it's already here then that makes so much sense to reuse it and to go out and buy some like sustainable version of X, Y, or Z. If you do want a proper tour of the kitchen, you can watch my apartment tour video. It's all there. Don't forget that if you wanna give Audible a try, you can use the link audible.com slash Sedona to give it a go, or you can text Sedona to 500-500. Thank you so much to them for sponsoring this video. They're making it possible and making all the things that I have coming in 2020 possible. I hope you guys are doing swell. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram, subscribe to the newsletter, the podcast, all of the important links are in the description box below and i will talk to you guys in the next video as always remember to stay happy humble and forever compassionate and i love you guys so so much bye